Overall, I'm an enormous bull on the country. I mean, over time, I mean, this is the most remarkable uh, success story in the history of the world, if you think about it. I mean, in 1790, we had less than 4 million people in this country. We had, there were 290 million people in China. There were 100 million people in Europe. You know, and, and they all had the same intellect we had. They were in the same general climate. They had lots of natural resources. And 215 years later, that those 3.9 million people, I think, actually, uh, you know, have 30 percent or so of the world's GDP. So it does not make sense to bet against America. That doesn't mean all our policies are smart or anything. But I would not, I do, I do not get pessimistic on the country. You know, I worry about the, I mean, the big, the big worry is, is what can, be done by uh, either terrorists or govern governments that have access to nuclear, chemical, or biological weapons. But, but in terms of the basic economics of the country, your children are going to live better than you live, and your grandchildren are going to live better than you, than your children live. Uh, and and we we do not focus on 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 on, on macro factors. But, uh, Charlie, well, I agree with you that the economics of the country are probably going to increase for a considerable period ahead. Now, the interesting thing is this paper from 1942, since then, there have been 14 American presidents. Just since my young venture into the stock market at 11, uh, I've lived under 14 of the 44 presidents the United States has had. Now, now, they call Trump 45, but they count Grover Cleveland twice. So there's really only been 44 presidents of the United States. And 14 of the 44 have been during this period when that $10,000 became 51 million. Seven have been Republicans. Seven have been Democrats. One has been assassinated. One has resigned under pressure. Uh, it works. You know, it, it it, if you if you told me at the start, you know that, that you'd have a Cuban Missile Crisis and you'd have you'd have nuclear weapons and you'd have a panic in 2000, financial panic and you'd have many recessions and you'd have war in the streets in the late 60s from a divided country, you'd say, why the hell are you buying stocks? And through it all, you know, America in fits and starts, but America really really moves ahead, and uh, uh, we are always, we survived the Civil War. I mean, I hate to think of having to do it that way, but this country, in only less than three of my lifetimes, if you go back three of my lifetimes, uh, you go back 263 years, I guess, and uh, Thomas Jefferson is 12 years old. And that's just three, and there was nothing here. It, you know, you've flown in from all over to Omaha today, and you flew over a country with more than 75 million owner-occupied homes and 260 million vehicles and the great universities and medical systems and, and everything. And it's all, it's all a net gain in less than three of my lifetime. So, and we've had these events uh, since, since I started buying my first stock. This country really, really works, and it, and it always will have lots of disagreements, and after every election, you'll have people feeling the world is coming to an end, and, you know, how could this happen? And I remember my future father-in-law in 1952, he wanted to have a talk with me before uh, his daughter and I got married. So kind of reluctantly, I sat down with him and he, he said, Warren, he said, there's just one thing I want to tell you. He said, you're going to fail. Uh, he said, you know, the Democrats are going to get in, you know, they're going to take over the country and you're going to fail, but don't feel responsible for it because it's not your fault. I mean, he wanted to absolve me from this feeling that one of his daughter was starving to death, it was my fault. And, and I kept buying stocks and doing a little bit better all the time. And, but, and if the Republicans were in, it was okay, and it was because of them that I was doing well, and if it, they were out, forget it, it was all going to disappear. So I've, been, I've seen a lot of American public opinion over the 
years. I've seen a lot of media commentary. I've seen the headlines. And when you get all through with it, this country has six times the per capita GDP growth, uh, the GDP per capita that it had when I was born. One person's lifetime, six for one change. Everybody in this room, essentially, is living better in multiple ways than John D. Rockefeller Sr. was, who was the richest person, you know, in the world at the, uh, during my early years. And, and we're all living better than, than he could live. So this is a remarkable, remarkable uh, country, and we found something very special. <laughs> okay. I would like to talk to you about uh, the economic future of the country, because I remain convinced as I have. I was convinced of this. Uh, in World War II, I was convinced of it. During the Cuban Missile Crisis, 9-11, the financial crisis, that, that uh, uh, nothing can basically stop America. And, and uh, uh, we faced great problems in the past. We haven't faced this exact problem. In fact, we haven't really faced anything that quite resembles this problem. And, uh, but we faced tougher problems. And the American miracle, the American magic, has always prevailed, and it will do so again. And I would, I would like to take you through a little history uh, to essentially make my case that if you were to pick one time to be born and one place to be born, and you didn't know what your sex was going to be, you didn't know what your intelligence would be, you didn't know what your special talents or special deficiencies would be, that if you could do that one time, you would not pick 1720, you would not pick 1820, you would not pick 1920, you'd pick, to, you'd pick today, and you would pick America. And of course, the interesting thing about it is that ever since America was organized, in 1789, when um, George Washington took the oath of office, uh, people have wanted to come here. Can you imagine that? You know, for, for 231 years, uh, there's always been people that have wanted to come here.